The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to John. As Jesus went along, he saw a man who had been blind from birth. He spat on the ground, made a paste with the spittle, put this over the eyes of the blind man and said to him, Go and wash in the pool of Siloam, a name that means sent. So the blind man went off and washed himself and came away with his sight restored. His neighbors and people who earlier had seen him begging said, Isn't this the man who used to sit and beg? Some said, Yes, it is the same one. Others said, No, he only looks like him. The man himself said, I am the man. They brought the man who had been blind to the Pharisees. It had been a Sabbath day when Jesus made the paste and opened the man's eyes. So when the Pharisees asked him how he had come to see, he said, he put a paste on my eyes and I washed and I can see. Then some of the Pharisees said, this man cannot be from God. He does not keep the Sabbath. Others said, how could a sinner produce signs like this? And there was disagreement among them. So they spoke to the blind man again. What have you to say about him yourself now that he has opened your eyes? He is a prophet, replied the man. Are you trying to teach us? They replied. And you are a sinner, true and true, since you were born? And they drove him away. Jesus heard they had driven him away, and when he found him, he said to him, Do you believe in the Son of Man? Sir, the man replied, Tell me who he is, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said, You are looking at him. He is speaking to you. The man said, Lord, I believe, and worshipped him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> Listening to the first reading, man looks at your appearance, whereas God looks within you. You know, women, normally you got conceal, you got foundation, you got makeup, and you look so beautiful. With or without makeup, makeup, you will look beautiful if you are in the light. You know, <clears throat> Today's gospel reading is chosen because of the scrutiny. Actually, there's another gospel reading which speaks about the light. I am the light came to take you away from darkness, but you choose to be in the darkness. And today's second reading speaks explicitly about the light. I'm sure all of you have been to the cinema, to the theaters. Yes, no? Yes, all of us have been to the cinemas. <clears throat> when you walk into the cinema, pitch dark. Of course, nowadays you got your handphone, chung, straight away lighter. <clears throat> but assuming don't have handphone and you're walking into the cinema, into the theater, and it is pitch dark, and so what are you going to do? You are going to grope your way, and you may find yourself making sure that you don't misstep on something and fall a trip or knock against someone or you might knock against the chair and hurt yourself and so you are very careful about walking in the cinema in the darkness of the cinema but let's say a little bit of rays of light are in that cinema like you know when you see the kulwar there a bit of light coming in and so a little bit of light rays are there and you are a bit more sure of yourself. And so you are comfortably trotting and you're maybe you are walking, you are sure of what you are doing and you are walking a bit more okay. Lah. Now when the whole cinema is lit, 
you careless you are so comfortable you are so relaxed you know where you are walking and you are sure what you are making where, where your steps are you need not have to be so careful now visualize imagine yourself as that part of the cinema your body if it is with no light then you are groping but a little light then you are a little comfortable but when you are illumined like in the second reading you are so illuminated that you are sure of your footing you are sure where you are <clears throat> you know a lot of people young people especially they like to be in the dark you know when you go to the pub when you go to the night clubs you don't have lights on no young people all now get angry with me la it's okay so what you do in the dark is not so appeasing to the soul now jesus healed the blind man he healed the blind man the moment he healed him light dawned in him and he was able to see and the gospel of the other normal gospel of the, the, the day says i have come that you may have light but you choose to be in the darkness you choose to be in the darkness dear sisters and brothers there are some here young ones some 20 some 30 some 50 some 70 <clears throat> how can i come to the light you have to put a lot of effort in coming to the light you know we go for confession and after confession we feel oh i am healed i am i am forgiven it is not as easy as that dear sisters and brothers confession is just reminding you to be determined not to sin again what what about all the sins that you have committed over the years from my childhood until now and i'm 50 years old assuming you have to cleanse those sins in indian philosophy we called it karma the karma will come back to you none of us can escape this otherwise how easy la i commit all the sins in the world go for confession and last minute i say lord forgive me and i am forgiven we have to pay for every sin that we commit in order to to be freed of this sin in order to be liberated there is a way if you are a, assuming if you are 50 years old 50 years of sins i have committed and from now on i want to be different i want to change i have to put more effort in prayer more effort in reading the bible more effort in connecting myself to god more effort in coming to church more effort in meditation more effort in being happy being at the service of others if you are 20 years old god bless you young ones if you are 20 years old you have got only 20 years of sins so you can make up for it very easily very easily but if you are 50 and 60 you maybe have may have to put double the effort triple the effort because imagine the number of sins that we have committed and are you doing that you know many of us we come to church and think we will be saved you know beatific vision you know what is beatific vision seeing god face to face and only a holy one can be able to see god face to face not any one of us so don't be assured tomorrow you die i'll be in heaven you have to pay you have to work hard if you want to get a phd you have to work harder masters or degree if you want to get a phd with the lord you know how much more we have to work how many how many how many times in a day you spend remembering god or meditating 5 minutes or referring to the bible or re praying the rosary or spending one hour for the hail mary no most of us we don't and yet we want to be saved you know what's the problem the second reading of yesterday's 
the, the gospel passage of the, the second, week, second week of Lent, of year B, the Lord is in love with you. He says, I love you. I love you so much. He loves us, you know. He loves us so much. The question is, do you love him? Do you love him enough? Do you think coming to church telling you love him? What about the six days that, or say seven and a half days or seven and three quarter days that you spend your time elsewhere? Do you do things pleasing and appeasing to him? Or you do otherwise? And you can determine that yourself. How much I love God. You know, <laughs> the moment you, after mass, you go out and you see your car is being blocked by another guy. Bloody idiot, which bugger blocked my car? Finished. The whole effort is now gone. Likewise, many, many things that we do. Dear sisters and brothers, it is not easy, as you may think. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 tells us, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Which kingdom are you seeking? What are you looking at? Whom are you looking for? Seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added unto you. Every single day, what am I doing? John chapter 1 verse 5 tells us, The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. The light is referred to Jesus Christ. The light shines in the darkness. And if each one of us seated here, we are so connected. We are so grafted onto Jesus. And when you are grafted onto him, you are going to shine in return. And when someone comes to you, you will be able to Enjoy that influence over the other person positively. Just like imagine the cinema I spoke about. When you are in darkness and the other person who may be even more worse than you come to you, both of you will be caught up with each other negatively. When you are in a little bit of light and the other person who is in darkness comes to you, you will be a little confused. But when you are illuminated to the fullest, and the other person, full of darkness, comes to you. Two possibilities can happen. It's either you change that person or you will ward that person off because you are shielded. You are shielded with the power and grace of God that nothing negative can penetrate into you. You are so shielded that this light of yours is so illuminating that nothing evil can come close to you. On the contrary, there is every possibility that you can charge, charge and change that person if that person is yielding. So this is how the Lord works in our lives, dear sisters and brothers. John chapter 8, verse 12. Again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Whoever follows him will not walk in darkness, but will have the light. Dear sisters and brothers, are you following Jesus? Are you walking in the light? If surely, if surely you are walking in the light, you will enjoy him. Because you will become like him. And then you will have that light of life. So dear sisters and brothers, we have to work harder, depending on your age. And if you are comfortable as you are where you are right now in this age, and you think I've done enough, and I've only to do so much, then fine, well and good. If not, you may have to work doubly. You may have to work triple the effort, or even four times. Because each one of us seated here, you know yourself. 
So remember, the Lord healed the blind that man can see and he proclaimed Jesus. We are also blind in some sense. We seemingly can see, but our soul may be in darkness. And so let us pray, dear sisters and brothers, for this grace. For this grace that I may become more and more like Jesus in the walk of my life. Otherwise, you may be living in ignorance, thinking that, oh, this is fine, I'm a Christian. And the world over, people are living in darkness. Let you be illumined. Though the young ones, they can easily succumb to the other because we want to fit with the others. If I am not there, if I don't do what they do, they will not accept me. Who cares if anyone accepts you or not? Worry and be careful. Care that Jesus accepts you or not. Not anyone. Don't worry about the world. Worry about Jesus. If you are here, what are you here for? What are you here for? Because I am in the choir and so I am there. Because I am comedian minister, so I am there. Because I am a Catholic, so I am there. No, 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 no. no. Because it's Jesus. Because it is Jesus. Let him touch you. Let him, in, let him illumine your hearts. And so you become so different, dear sisters and brothers. Let us pray for this grace. You know, a lot of... Uh, people mix marriages these days they do not know where they are going after getting married you marry a, the Hindus are just beautiful people wonderful people the Buddhists as well the, the, the Muslims for that matter also or even the Taoist when I am in Jesus I have to reflect I have to witness to that light and then I can tell the other. But the problem is, I just succumb to the other and I do not know where I stand. You know, <clears throat> let me finish with this story. Last week I was with the fathers who were here for retreat. We went to <coughs> Malacca for dinner. And afterwards we had the Portuguese settlement. And one of this Portuguese lady came to me and said, we, she brought us to for dinner and then she said, Father, you know something? This place eventually will disappear. The Portuguese settlement. I say, why? There are Portuguese girls, these Eurasian girls who fall in love with uh, Muslims or even guys. And there was this girl who was in one of the stalls there and she was in Tudong. And she said, Father, you know that lady? That girl is a, was, a, was, a, was a Catholic. Now she is a Muslim. And there's a big, huge statue a replica of uh, the one in Buenos Aires, you know, that beautiful statue of Jesus. And that replica is being, now it's being renovated. And she was telling me, Father, in, no time, in, in a couple of years, we may, may, may this, this settlement may disappear. Because more and more are leaving the Catholic faith and getting married to Muslims. And afterwards, the Muslims will come and take over. Ini Adala, no more Portuguese settlement. Maybe they were dead right there, Islamic settlement or whatever. So you see what's happening to us. We don't live our Catholic faith anymore. And so someone will take it over. And that is going to happen if you and I live in darkness. Our children will be there. Today I see so many people coming to church. How come? Because catechism teach class la father. I have to bring my child to catechism and so I am here. What are you doing here? You shouldn't be here. If you are here, not for catechism class, you are here because of Jesus. Because catechism class, I bring my child. Some parents send the child to, children, to, to catechism, they go off and come back to pick them up. How sad. So parents, young ones, young parents especially, wake up. Second reading tells you, don't sleep. Wake up. God is with you. He loves you. The question is, do you love him enough? If you love him, you will choose to walk in the light, not in darkness. Let us come to love him more. God bless you.